Okay, welcome back to the snap. Delighted to say Michael Heaver here, of course, alongside my co-host Patrick O'Flynn. Patrick, first of all, how are you? Uh, yeah, I'm well. Getting nervous for uh, Tuesday evening and uh, England v Germany. Hoping we go out there and, and give it a real go. I'd hate to lose 1-0 having uh, played a cagey game through the match. Yeah, well, of course, some of the big boys knocked out now. The Dutch are out. Uh, Portugal knocked out. You know, I think I'm always optimistic as an England fan, but I do think this year could be our year. And what a way to do it if we do it through Wembley uh, and we knock the Germans out as well on the way. Could be quite the story, couldn't it? Uh, yeah, there's probably slightly more chance of that than there is of Keir Starmer ever being Prime Minister. <laughs> uh, only slightly. Well, of course, we've got to turn to that, uh, Patrick, because it's a story that me and you have been calling way before the bubble tuned in. Uh, this big, uh, potentially defining by-election for Keir Starmer's leadership coming up on Thursday. Uh, the thing is with this, Patrick, we know we've talked about it before. So much at stake here after losing Hartlepool, after being absolutely tranced in the West Midlands and Tees Valley and elsewhere. Do you think... Firstly, that Keir Starmer's Labour Party will win. And do you think, if they did lose it, that Starmer can cling on or not? Uh, well, after the surprise of Chesham and Amersham, one's got to be slight, have a slight qualifying note. Now, I expect Labour to lose in Batley and Spen, but there's a couple of imponderables, one of which is their candidate, Kim Ledbetter, being seen getting really hounded in the constituency that might win some sympathy uh, for her from people who were wavering. Uh, and then we had the, the Matt Hancock affair on Friday and into the weekend, uh, which I think Boris Johnson has handled badly, initially backing him when it was, you know, pretty obvious the guy who makes the rules uh, that we've all had to follow had to follow them himself, and he didn't. Uh, so Boris handled it badly, but I think Boris has been saved by the amazing achievement of Keir Starmer handling it even worse. Keir Starmer, Captain Hindsight, I think we'll have to christen the Keir View Mirror as his way of looking <laughs> at, at politics. He didn't even come out and do a video clip saying Hancock uh, should have gone until after Hancock had gone. He completely missed the story again, lackadaisical, uh, kind of just, just treading water, uh, apparently not realising uh, the peril he's in and how weak his position is. And I think on the snap, we've called from the start, we've taken a big position on this, where the commentary at thought Keir Starmer's the greatest thing since sliced bread. Our position has been that he's incompetent, he's useless, he is, lacks urgency, he lacks political insight, he can't win. Uh, and he's on his way out. And I think the pattern of events uh, is still bearing us out on all that. I think what people need to bear in mind of all of this, and obviously there's a lot of speculation over the weekend as to whether this will be curtains for Keir, is that for a leadership challenge to be triggered, you only need 20% of Labour MPs. Uh, now, when you consider the fact the Labour Parliamentary Party has obviously shrunk given uh, its battering at the last general election, that would mean only 40 Labour MPs would have to effectively back that challenge. That's only six more than the current membership of what's described as the Socialist Campaign Group, which is essentially the Corbynistas in Parliament. So, Patrick, I think that's a fairly low bar because at the end of the day, look, if you're a Labour MP looking at this now, if you can't win in Hartlepool, and you're absolutely, and you followed that up with the, at the by-election the Lib Dems won with your worst ever by-election result. You're nowhere in Tees Valley. You're nowhere in the West Midlands. And then you were to lose Batley and Spent as well. Then the question that, that, that I keep posing here on the snap is, where can Labour win? That becomes the question. It does become the question. And I think we're seeing the splintering of the Labour coalition, you know, the loss of the white working class uh, in Hartlepool, in Chesham and Amersham, the, the progressive middle class clustering behind the Lib Dems and even, even to the, behind the Greens more than the Labour Party. And then you're into Batley and Spen, uh, and it, it's uh, the, the South Asian Muslim block of votes uh, being eaten into uh, by George Galloway. And again, indications that the white working class vote uh, is leaning more and more conservative. So 
when you've got a structural problem like that of a coalition uh, splintering, what you really need is inspirational leadership. Uh, someone that, that your voters from all sorts of backgrounds can believe in, say, yeah, that's the person, that's the next prime minister. Uh, Starmer with his legal career was supposed to be that person. He obviously isn't. Whether the challenge to him comes very quick or not, I think depends on not whether someone like Dawn Butler, Butler will stand and be some kind of stalking horse. It's whether a serious left wing challenger is up for it. And I do see that as being Angela Rayner. She's not quite the full campaign group Corbyn Easter, but she's very much on that on that side of uh, the left right split. Uh, you know, and I think, as I say, I wrote a piece in the Spectator Coffeehouse saying, saying she's Labour's killer queen. If she puts out signals, perhaps via someone like John McDonnell, that she's up for it, then, yeah, we could well see a leadership challenge. Yeah, as you mentioned, Patrick, over the weekend, we've heard names like Dawn Butler, Angela Rayner, also Lisa Nandy, Yvette Cooper. The problem I think Labour have is they seem to be obsessed, uh, at least Starmer's team do, with basically platitudes, and again, this is something we've talked about, that there's, where is where is the oomph? Where is the fight back since the historic Hartlepool defeat? And indeed, we've seen a few articles come out now um, quoting unnamed Labour sources, uh, sort of close uh, or allies of uh, Starmer. And they just seem to me to be ridiculously complacent, as if no matter what happens in Batley and Spen, even after the previous election disasters that uh, the Labour Party have seen, that as if Starmer's got at least another year or two. And I don't necessarily think that's the case, because again, if you look at this from the point of view of a, a Labour MP, it starts to become a question of survival for your political career, because what you could see in the current trajectory, I think we are wrong, is that the uh, defeat that we saw for Labour at the last general election actually the remaining red wall is further obliterated at the next general election and Labour, their parliamentary party, shrinks even further. I think so. I mean, there were reports at the weekend, too, that the Blairites in the Labour Party have completely lost faith uh, in Starmer. And I think it's a, it's a slightly fantasy island idea of getting Mr Tony back into Parliament to, to save everybody. I think you'd need a time machine to, to rewind to before the Iraq war, before the A8 accession into the UK labour market and many other mistakes that Tony Blair made. But uh, I do think the ineptitude of Keir Starmer and his inner circle is quite staggering. He doesn't know the basics of opposition leadership. You know, one of the things, what's your three things, Keir? You know, Tony Blair said education, 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 just as a way of registering one of his three things. W what is Starmer's thing? And, you know, he, he got a page lead in the Daily Mail on Friday. You know, and even I haven't read it all, but it was something to do with being tougher on law and order. Now, Keir Starmer and his gang think, tick, we've done law and order. But, you know, that was the day the Matt Hancock story broke. I think it was on page 20 of the Daily Mail. One story once. That's not how you do it. You have to uh, punch the bruise time and again. You have to have a soundbite. What's his proposition? Is it that Tories can't be trusted to defend working class neighbourhoods. If it is, find a soundbite, say it again and again and again, attach it to stories every day of the week and begin to get a narrative out there in the public. They don't do that. They do. They say one thing once and then they recline back in their comfy chairs, tick a box and think we've done that. They're absolutely hopeless. Well, who knows, Patrick? I mean, look, by-elections always can have uh, unpredictable results. We do know that the one constituency poll that's been publicly released did have the Tories gaining the seat, Labour second, George Galloway third. But I don't know, you, we could see, I don't I mean, I don't think this is going to happen, but you never quite know. And perhaps you could see Labour cling on and Starmer go and visit the constituency and sort of uh, claim that it's a, a, a turnaround moment for the Labour Party. But I just think, and I've thought this for a while, that the, the, the likely prospect is that you are going to see a leadership challenge to Keir Starmer. And as you said, I think the uh, seriousness of that challenge will be defined by the seniority, the credibility of the potential challenger. Whatever the fallout from the by-election, you can depend on me and Patrick here on the snap to give you all the very latest. So make sure you hit subscribe and the bell so you don't miss the next show and we will both be back soon. 
See you soon, folks.